My name is Winston McKenzie. I'm a former professional boxer. I'm also a politician, a London mayoral candidate, standing in the 2020 mayoral London elections. And I mean to win. This is serious. This campaign is so serious. I want the whole of the community to get on, to get on board. Not just about the colour of your skin, black people, white people, Indian people. This is about us. This is about the community. And if the community can reach out and come together and work at this thing, we can get a slice of the action. When I say a slice of the action, I mean inclusivity. People from all nations, all creeds, in this country, regard themselves as British citizens and want to see this country prosper, the door will be wide open to you. Rising youth, youth crime is precipitated by the media and the government, successive governments. As you can see, have made the situation the way it is today. But it has been engineered. This is what happens when they continually bring out the cuts. Racism, poverty, unemployment, housing, all influenced by the media. There's a high, higher power. There's an agenda to keep, to destroy the working class. There's an agenda to destabilize London. This is the financial epicenter of the world. Things must work for Londoners and those that live here. If it, think, if it doesn't work in London, it will never work. We have a mayor in situ right now that hasn't got a clue he hasn't got a dream. If you haven't got a dream, how can you make a dream come true? Now, the gun and knife crime situation is precipitated by the ploy of the government in this country. Successive governments have held ordinary people back. The education system has broken down. It's almost irreparable, but they're happy for it to be that way. The Uber rich. The liberal elite are taking control. 17.5 people voted to come out of the European Union. We voted to come out. We weren't told that there would be any stipulations. We were told, vote, you vote in or you vote out and we'll be out. Now, Theresa May and her cohorts are bringing all these complications. Things we never knew existed. If Britain Britain has turned its back on the Commonwealth, Britain has turned its back on the Commonwealth over the years. Business, trade and industry, we have so much in common with the Commonwealth. And yet today we decide we've decided to turn to Europe, the undemocratic bureaucrats. We turn to the undemocratic bureaucrats of Brussels. They've never had their accounts written off. They've never. We did. Did you elect them? I never elect, elected those people to govern my future. They have elected themselves. These are the people who are running our lives. The sooner Britain can turn its back on the EU. I'm not saying entirely, what I'm saying is we can still be friends with the, our European brothers and sisters, we can work with you, but the fact is, the Germans have never forgotten that they lost the war, and they're still fighting. Britain is just about the most amazing country in the world, everybody wants a slice of us. We have to protect what we have. Gang culture is sweeping London, it's sweeping England. If, you, if we can get it right in London, and I know I can, I don't think I can, I know I can. It's being caused by inclusivity. 
the youngsters are not being included. They're told to go to work, study, uh, get home early, do your homework and get your exam results and then they hit the brick wall. Everything crashes. We don't want to see that situation anymore. I'm streetwise. I've been brought up tough, ex-boxer, from a fighting family. I'm a fighter. I'm not a queer politician. I get involved. I understand what is needed out there. And what is needed today is to, we need to engage the youth. We need to engage them. I remember in 2008, I stood for Mayor of London against Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson played the biggest trick on the youth. He asked them to bring their ideas and all their plans to City Hall for a meeting after he'd won. I watched those views that day. They, they came down with all their papers and all their ideas. And it was a big laugh to them. But I'll tell you now, I want those views to come back. Get back to the drawing board. Bring all your stuff. And let's get it on. Let's include the youth of today. Let's engage them. Black, white, yellow thing. Now we have a situation whereby it's predominantly black youth are killing one another. This is because of the disparity in housing, unemployment. It's a complete shambles. And my idea, my vision of the whole thing is that London is overcrowded and it is an agenda to ruin London. There is an agenda to destabilize London, ruin the financial epicenter of the world, and there they have the control. So we can't turn around and say that immigration has nothing to do with it. Immigration was a plan. The untold amounts of people coming into this country, you'll find that the British people aren't inherently racist, but they can't cope with the numbers of people coming in and changing the culture of the country. Immigration doesn't mean black, it doesn't mean yellow, it doesn't mean pink. It means Britain is increasingly, London is increasingly, London itself is increasingly becoming overcrowded because of the plan that the liberal elite have to destroy us. And the sooner we realize that and turn the establishment around, turn it around, the Lib Lab cons that we've relied on for so many years to have our interests at heart have failed us. They brought us into Windrush. They brought us into wars, the Iraq war. They teamed up with all the warmongers of the world while we're starving and we now have to pay for the debt, fill the deficit. The terrorism in this country, all indoctrinated. That's what it is. It's all planned, it's all designed to unstable London. It's more than a lack of opportunity. The opportunities are out there. The opportunities are out there, but as I said, they brought thousands of millions of people to this country, see, all seeking immigration, housing, schooling. Our NHS is burdened. It's burdened. Why? Why is our NHS burdened? Millions and billions of pounds being poured into it. Despite the amount of money being poured into the NHS, we are still burdened. People are lying in corridors, dying in corridors not being attended to. We have too many people in the country at any one time. There has been no plan, no facilities set aside for these people as they're coming in. Anyone coming into this country should pay their way. They should pay for their med medical facilities. They should be able to contribute something to this country. They are unable to do so. So let's turn that around. Let's stand and fight for what we believe in. Your forefathers, my forefathers, died, gave their lives to save this country. And I tell you, so Winston Churchill, the other great Winston, would turn in his grave today if he knew that Britain had come to what it has today. He's always said, 
if there's a choice between <laughs> Britain and the open sea, between Europe and the open sea, then Britain must choose the open sea. She must choose the open sea. And that's what we have to do. It isn't even the gangs. <laughs> All this hype about gangs. The, the problem is within, it's within society. People, the community have become disgruntled. Just over the weekend, some 40-year-old man uh, took a knife to uh, two women in the streets. You know, this isn't about gangs. You've got your one of your few people, few little groups who call themselves gangs or who they portray as being gangs. These are groups who've just joined together because they've been excluded from society and they need to be brought into the equation. This so-called gang culture doesn't exist. There are more people, more civilians in society today who are guilty of knife crime, uh, prostitution, uh, people trafficking, child um, female mutual geni uh, uh, genital mutilation. All these evil crimes are going on. All these crimes from these misogynists who portray themselves as being patriots are evil people. Our police when I become mayor of London, if it is the British public, if it's Lo Londoners' choice that I become mayor of London, our police force will boast the best, the greatest police force in the world. They need retraining. They need to be cleaned out root and branch. They need retraining. I don't want to see no people pulled up for arrest and killed in police custody because that's what's happening in America. And I'm wondering how long before it comes to these shows. I want our police to boast the best, best police service, the best police force in the world, the greatest in the world, and we can be. I have, you may ask, how would I pay for all this? And let me tell you, I have priorities. I have priorities. Our borders, our met, our fire service, services, our NHS, housing and employment, they are my priorities. So you can see where the money could be better spent then? I can see and the people can see where the money can be better spent. But you have to remember, the people running this country, they're not you and I. They're not people like you and I. We have done our apprenticeship. These guys have come straight from the cradle into politics, telling us how to run our lives. And they've never had a proper day job in their life. We have that experience. So you have to broaden your horizons, broaden your horizons, and reach out to the wider community to solve the gun and knife crime issues. Once you've solved the masses coming into the country, once you've, you've, you're in a position where you can manage it, because let's face it, it's the masses, the masses, not the few hundred or the few thousand coming in every year. We're not concerned. It doesn't bother the English about different people coming into this country. What bothers the English today, what bothers the Commonwealth people in this country are the masses. Great Britain turned its back on the Commonwealth. They're wondering how they're going to close the gap if Brussels pulls out, if we get a no Brexit deal. But let me tell you, we've got the rest of the world, but above all, we have the Commonwealth. Commonwealth trade and industry. Commonwealth trade and industry is where Britain should centre its future on. Ask any Englishman in the street what his views are on the Commonwealth. He'll tell you Britain should be aligned very closely to the Commonwealth, working with those Commonwealth countries. Now we've turned our backs and the Chinese have got in. Um, and the, 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 everybody's got in. All these countries have got in and are making hay while Britain sits back. We have so much in, in common, common trade, common industries, common banking. 
with the common ones. That's where we should be today. They're not interested. They're not interested in working with. with, with, with um, they're not interested in working with black people. Okay. Yeah. If you just look at the Windrush situation, okay. people are still homeless. They're still disorientated. Labour. Alan Johnson created. He devised. He created a hostile environment policy. No. And it was taken over by Theresa May. The policy was designed to make immigrants frightened, not coming into this country and to go home. Right. And when Theresa May got in, she took over from Labour. Right. So Labour are no better than the Tories. The hostile environment policy was, was devised by the Labour government and Theresa May took it over and made the situation even worse. But where we stand with immigration is appalling. It's appalling. Um, Caribbeans who've been here, like myself, since the early 50s. My father came here, worked, toured his way to the top and made a, a way for me. Could you imagine being part of this country and what it and what it stands for, being told to go home, the humiliation? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine the distraught that was brought about?